I could do that. So um, yeah, welcome guys. This is uh, I'm John Hedinger. I think everybody knows me. I'll just give a little bit of my background. First of all, for those who don't know me, um, I graduated from BYU. I ran cross country and track at BYU. And, um, and then I went down to UT Austin for grad studies, uh, went down to Houston, worked for about five years. Uh, actually seven years and then uh, now I teach at BYU. I've been at BYU for eight years now and uh, running has always been a big part of my life and um, I've had kids in the program and one of the reasons why I started Roadrunners was because uh, Jane was coming up through the program and uh, there's no middle school program and uh, I just wanted to make something that was not only great for her, but for a lot of these athletes that, you know, don't have an opportunity to start competing. Um, and uh, I have other kids coming up through as well. So I'm, I'm planning on doing this for quite a few years. Uh, the, just some of the um, things that we started this last year, we started it with TimpView as their summer training program and uh, we trained with them last summer and then we started with the cross country season this last fall we how long have they been out there what's up do you know gracie no. oh sorry you don't know how long they've been out there <laughs> okay a very what uh, talk in the background uh, okay so anyway we did usatf nationals and then we were setting ourselves up for a nice outdoor track season we did winter track as well but then the uh, quarantine hey guys hit, so we did you just come out here modified uh to, to make it work um things are still obviously you know there's we're still in a yellow condition for the state of utah uh infection rates are still um not under control. So we're going to take some extra precautions, even more than um, what the state recommends. And I wanted to talk about those with you guys uh, so that you, know, you feel comfortable with what we propose, but um, also if we can make some adjustments um, to help you feel even more comfortable with it, then I'd like to do that. Um, okay, so we're going to start practices Monday, Wednesday, Friday. And it's going to be uh, 7 a.m. to 8.15 a.m. at Sertoma Park, right next to Centennial Middle School. And uh, I won't be able to give rides. Uh, sometimes it, we've carpooled or things like that. I think it would just be better to not do that. Just have individual, you know, individuals take a bike there or uh, have, a, have a ride individually. Uh, when we're there, last summer I also brought like a water container and they can fill up their water bottles or things like that or we use the drinking fountain. So we're going to just try to eliminate all contact between athletes, you know, no high fives, hugs, anything like that. Um, and then uh, observe the social distancing guidelines to stay, you know, six plus feet apart. Um, but then beyond that, divide into subgroups. So they're not running all together with a big group. Um, they're in training groups of about four each that are matched to their abilities. So we'll meet together for a warm up, uh, dynamic stretching, and then the individual groups will go off on runs and then uh, come back. We might do a core workout at the end um, and then maybe have some appropriate uh, group activities that are not um, social contact either. Um, so that's, uh, that's practice. Um, the, uh, the season is, it's kind of unique because the season is going to be the cross country season, uh, you know, starting in the fall, hopefully by late August, we'll, if things continue to improve, we'll be able to do some races. Um, the one thing that might happen is USATF is also thinking about doing a um, USATF may be doing a track season and that might be starting late July and then August because we skipped the current track season. And so they might be having some races and kind of an abbreviated season. Um, so that's still under consideration. Uh, again, they're just trying to figure out if things are gonna be safe to do that. Um, okay, so that's the 
uh, okay, one other thing I will mention is at the beginning of practice, we're required to do a symptom check um, of all athletes that come to practice. And so that will include uh, looking for certain, um, that will include looking for certain symptoms while, uh, you know, ha ha have a questionnaire and then also take a temperature of each of the athletes when they come to practice. So that will be, I have an infrared temperature gun. Uh, we just pointed at their foreheads. It's not very accurate, but it doesn't involve any contact between the person doing the evaluation and, and the athlete. And then we'll just uh, look for any elevated temperatures. Okay, so um, that's it uh, for what I had to say about practice and, and the season. And I'd love to get your feedback. Uh, you can either put something in the chat window or you can unmute your microphone. And uh, we'll just have kind of a question and answer at this point. I just, you said Sertoma, right? Not Timpu? Yeah, uh, so let me explain a little bit of that situation. Timpu is also doing this, but they, all athletes have to check in through their school nurse each time they come to practice. And so they all have to report by the Thunderdome up by the track. They do the symptom check and the evaluation, and then they run down to the uh, Tempu area. The one thing that um, is kind of unique is that they only have one school nurse doing it for all sports. So football needs to start at 7 a.m. And uh, football will take a little while <laughs> to, to get all of them. Cross country uh, is going to start at 7.15 a.m. And then JV, varsity will start at 7.15 and then the JV will start at 7.45 a.m. Uh, I just didn't want to put 30 road runners in there as well. So uh, we're gonna start at Sertoma. We would like to practice eventually with the high school team. But at any point, we can't have more than 50 individuals on the field at the same time. The group sizes have to stay under 50. And last year, there were over 100 uh, Timpu athletes. We had 55 roadrunners. So just doing the math, I, I think it would be better just to separate out, at least initially. And then we can see where we are as the season goes on. Obviously, the numbers are going to be much lower. Uh, this year, you know, some families are still not having their kids go out. Um, and so it's, you know, we're, we're okay with the hybrid approach. If, you know, your athlete uh, needs to train with brother or sister, we can continue giving workouts or try to do things virtually as much as possible. Yeah, I was going to ask that too, because for us, for example, for two weeks, Jade wouldn't be able to go because we're going on a family reunion and everyone has to like self quarantine where we're not doing a lot the two weeks. Prior. So that would be nice to have, like, she still wants to train and keep up with what you guys are doing. Perfect. Yeah. And I think what we'll do is just like we did the Zoom core workouts, um, when we're doing it with the big group there on the field, like at 8 a.m., 8 a. when we start the core workout, I'll just throw on a, a Zoom meeting. And those that need to, um, you know, join remotely, they can join the core workout or, or something like that. We'll try to make something like that work. Okay, great question and, and comments there. Okay, any other questions or comments uh, that you might have? Um, I have a question, my name's Katie and I learned about this from my daughter's friend and my daughter's going into seventh grade. She is a dancer, but she has never run before but she's interested in doing it. So can you help me understand what the beginning level looks like? Because I, I even said to her, I said, can you run the whole mile in PE? And she's like, I think so. I think I can run it without, so, cause, so it's kind of where we're at <laughs> right now. Yeah, and that's great. Thanks, Katie. So where, you know where is this? There's all ability levels. Um, some athletes go out there and they have to kind of run and walk. Uh, you know, the thing that I would say for any new athlete, the most important thing is just to commit to two weeks at least. Okay. Because um, that's about the time when, you know, the first week you're like, oh, I can do this. Uh, you know, after about the third or fourth day, you get sore, you, it's uncomfortable or, you know, and by two weeks, I find that they get friends, they get kind of addicted to running and uh, then they're in. So um, the, the main thing is just 
you know, to commit to two weeks. Uh, there are all ability levels, you know, like I said, the kind of the run walkers. Um, we also cut back the workouts, especially for people starting off because um, cross country is one of the most injury prone sports, not in terms of like concussions or things like that, but in terms of incidents and leg injuries. So I, especially for those starting off, we do a very gradual mild uh, build where you don't increase by more than 10% per week. And that helps them um, not have some of the leg injuries and other things. So we start off pretty conservative. Um, the, the one thing I will mention is my, my son started off when he started off high school and he did his first time trial. And I remember he was having the hardest time just finishing a mile under eight minutes, you know, which is, is pretty good, but you know, I was, he was trying to do two minutes a lap and, and uh, it was, he came down to the final home stretch and he, he was digging for everything he had. And I think he still got like an 815 or 820 mile. And then uh, later that year, he ran a, a 454 mile. <laughs> so he improved a lot. Wow. And now he's, you know, one of the top guys on the Timpview high school team. So, you know, starting off from a very, um, sounds like your daughter's a dancer, she's active, she's healthy, that's great. But, you know, even uh, athletes that come out there that have had a pretty sedentary lifestyle, um, it's, it's gonna be a big change for them, but we, you know, get into it gradually. And, you know, not everybody's gonna be the top runner on Tipview High School, but uh, I think the main thing is we wanna encourage them to come out there, be healthy, you know, develop a healthy lifestyle, and, and have friends and make it a really positive social experience for them. John, can I add one thing to that? This is yeah. Lisa, voice. Um, sorry if it's loud here. I'm actually walking on the beach. Don't all be jealous. <laughs> I have a face mask on in Encinitas, California. Um, you need to turn on but, your webcam. You know, I would say, no, no. Nah. Well, hold on, let's see. You're gonna love my grandma mask. And even though there are signs everywhere that say mask required, I might be the only one wearing one. Hold on. Okay, <laughs> can you guys see those? Oh, that's, uh, we're so jealous. No I'm the only one wearing a mask. But Katie, I was just gonna say, these kids are the nicest kids. And I have had a couple kids um, especially one of my older boys who showed up at Tim Few and had never run before. And he had to walk home from practice, like walk in more than half of the workout for the first few weeks even. And even the like varsity fastest boys were so kind to him. And people are walking, lots of people are working to improve. It felt safe for my kids to continue and uh, they love it. So. I think if she comes and brings a friend even, like there's no, and really inclusive and sheer really hard for everyone to just sort of improve from wherever they are. That's what I found. Oh, fantastic. Well, thanks so much, Lisa, for sharing that. And your kids have been fantastic runners as well on the team. Okay, uh, Julie, I think you, you had your hand up for a question. Yeah, uh, I'm trying to remember what it was because my family came in here. <laughs> um, uh, oh, Tiffany's really struggled because she wants to be there with the group. And I just was wondering what group looks like right now. Yeah. Uh, are, are you going to be splitting them off in twos still? Or are they going to have more people to run with than just their single partner? How, is it, how will it look? Yeah, great question. So what we're thinking about is, and I wanted to ask, ask you guys uh, this, but uh, we would warm up as, you know, s staying um, six feet apart, but do the two loops around the, the grass loop. So basically when they get there, they just start the warm up. We don't need to start it all together. Um, and then that would help us stagger it a little bit. So they're not like running in a group. So as they show up to practice, they just go run their two loops and then they um, get into their groups of four 
So we're going to have training groups of about four and they do their dynamic stretching with that group of four. And then they, we have like the workout for the day and then they go out and do their workout. Now, some of them are going to be like just there on Sertoma field. Like we're going to be doing loops around Sertoma, you know, it's a half a mile around. So it's, it's like a really big track, you know, 800 meter track. And um, if we keep the group size, I'm guessing it's probably going to be about 20 to about 20 kids out there per day. That's my guess. So maybe like five, five groups that are going to be running together. And um, those are going to be like consistent groups. So that's like their, their running group that they're going to have until more restrictions are lifted. Uh, we don't want to put you know, them running with bigger groups t together. So, um, and I know Tiffany, Tiffany's fantastic. I love how social Tiffany is and just, she wants to be there with the group. And, uh, but I also want to respect, um, you know, some of the, um, you know, just be a little bit more cautious even than the state guidelines. Okay, let's see, Nicole, looks like you had a question as well. And I have another one, um, let's see, looking at the chat window, Nicole had just had a question, are, are ages invited to these practice going into ninth grade? Um, so yes, uh, they, so I know Easton is gonna be going into ninth grade. Um, we do have the high schools, the high school practicing. So that is going to be uh, the tip view group and Easton, if he wanted to train with the high school group, that would be starting at 7.15 at, um, at Timpview High School. Um, but if he wanted to train with the Roadrunners, he'd certainly be welcome to join us as well. Okay, thanks, John. And you guys have a bit of a drive, don't you? It's an hour and a half drive. Yeah, but he wants to do it, so we're gonna try to make it a couple times. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I know there's, uh, he has a lot of friends on the team and they would certainly be glad to see, uh, see him as well. Thanks, John. Okay, great. Okay, any other questions or comments or feedback? Okay, I'm gonna just share with you guys the form that's there on, um, so I shared with you the link to that and let me just go ahead and share my screen. And um, let's see if I can do this without messing up something. Okay. So, uh, so I think Katie, I don't know if you've seen this, but we do have a Roadrunner group me. Uh, and so for anybody that's new, we, uh, you can join this. And then also if you want to send, you know, private messages to me, you can do that. It's just a way to kind of keep everything organized. We also um, have- How do we the, get our kids on the group me? Oh yeah, so I sent a, um, a link to that to join. And now if I join, if I make, if I add your number, then sometimes you have to reply within 10 messages or you get kicked off. So it's just better to, um, it's just better to join yourself. I'll post a link to it in the Facebook group as well. To join the so here's the Roadrunner Junior Club. And then on this form right here, this is the waiver form. And if you open this up, let's see, I created this, so it might be a diff little different view for me, but it has the Facebook group and then the group me text group. And if you just have them select that link, then um, they can add their number to the list. There's no cost to join for the summer. The fee that we had this last fall was $35. That included the $15 uniform and about $20 for the race fees. Spring is a little bit more because there's uh, USATF fees, uh, which is, uh, you know, we might even have a summer track season. We don't know. But those are optional, you know, the races and the race fees. Okay, and then the, here's the membership waiver. You guys can read that. Um, it's just standard stuff, you know, liability waiver. Just in, in lieu of a paper form, we're just going to do a, you just put in your full legal name for the parent or guardian. 
and I'll need an emergency contact phone number. Um, and then the participant sig signature, just go ahead and put that in there, the full legal name. And then you have a uh, participant birth date. We need that for the, uh, uh, for race registration. Okay, and then participant grade, I put a, um, just a playlist. And then volunteer opportunities. So these are just a couple things that, um, you know, just a couple things that you can volunteer on. Uh, symptom check, I can do that, but if I'm there to coach and help, kind of help athletes and get them organized, if somebody could come with like a face mask and be able to use that temperature gun and just check in before practice, that would help a lot. So just as you're filling out that form, if you're willing to do that, just select it. We, we are also looking for a couple assistant coaches, those that would like to run with the team um, or you know, with your athlete. Um, we have team editor for photos and videos, uh, team manager. I have about 100 uniforms <laughs> that I ordered and all the sizes, so just keeping all, track of all of those. Um, if, you're really, if you wanna get like an Instagram account going for the team or help with some of the Facebook, uh, other things like that. We've had parents that have done that in the past. Um, also, when food sharing is allowed, something like bring a watermelon or bring something else to practice, just to kind of make it uh, special. And then if you're willing to host a, an outdoor team party or social event, you know, maybe for smaller groups, like your group of four or something like that, when the quarantine restrictions allow this or others. So other ways that you guys uh, can think to be able to participate or contribute. The, the main thing is we're trying to make, keep the costs low. Um, you know, I volunteer uh, my time and uh, I've just had great parent support in the past. So if there's other ways that you can think about uh, that you'd like to be able to help the team, then go ahead and put them there. Okay, and for the assistant coach, if you are thinking about doing the assistant coaching, um, I will have to get you registered with USATF and have you do the training. And I'd be glad to cover those costs for you. It just takes a little while to uh, do that to get you certified and background check and, and other things. You know, any, anyone who's going to have, um, any, uh, anyone who's going to have, you know, frequent contact with the kids, uh, we want to have them background checked and um, you know just all the training and everything taken care of. Uh, that also provides uh, USATF insurance for our team um, for practices and races. Okay, so let's see. That's all I had from my side. Any other questions? I think we're this is this is fantastic. I I love seeing all of you guys here. A lot of uh, parents that I know and and uh, and looking forward to getting to know uh, all of you who okay yeah Amron, do you have a question yeah i just wanted to know john do we fill out the waiver if our child has already been running with the group do you need a new waiver or will last year's work yeah go ahead and do a new one we'll just do one of these each year uh, okay and uh you know it's the same waiver that you filled out before uh, i already have anya's birthday and all those other things but <laughs> hey anya how's it going so uh, yeah, I have a lot of information, but go ahead and just fill that out. And um, you know, it'll just, it should be a little bit easier this year because it's all electronic. It should only take about two minutes to fill it out. Thank you. Okay, guys. Thanks, John. Okay, thanks. And uh, look forward to seeing them 7 a.m. on uh, 7 a.m. on Monday, June 1st is when we're gonna be starting. Davey will be there Wednesday. We'll be back. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah. One of the things Bye. we'll do right at the beginning is just pick some team captains. So, um, you know, if your son or daughter wants to do that, just uh, also indicate that maybe on the other volunteer form. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thank you.